skincare nerds, welcome back. I'm Kathy, and every week we have fun breaking down the world of skincare and beauty. And this week we're talking about an ingredient that can give you a glowy, bright, and even skin tone that's been overlooked way too often. It's also my absolute holy grail, vitamin C. If I got stuck on a desert island and I was told I could only bring one serum, it'd be a very close race between retinol and vitamin C. I'm not sure which one would win actually because vitamin C is my go-to for day and retinol is totally my nighttime vibe. I love that I'm debating this totally hypothetical situation in my head right now. Anyways, let's talk about why you need to add a vitamin C serum into your routine, how to use it, how to layer it, and figure out which one is the best one for your skin. Let's get into it. So why am I so obsessed with vitamin C? Let's start with the facts. It's an antioxidant, which means it helps protect your skin cells from free radicals caused by the harmful rays from the sun, and it helps boost your sunscreen protection. It can reduce signs of premature aging by promoting collagen production. That can thicken your skin and help reduce the look of fine lines. It also inhibits melanin production, so it brightens and fades hyperpigmentation to even out your skin tone and helping you get that glow. It can also help repair damage from sun exposure and collagen loss by encouraging cell turnover into new healthy skin cells. So it's pretty wonderful. If you want to get glowier, even toned skin, vitamin C is where it's at. It's honestly amazing, but it's also a very high maintenance ingredient, so there are some things you should know. Pure vitamin C or alexorbic acid oxidizes really easily. That means it breaks down when it's exposed to light or air. If you notice a sour smell or a darker orange or brown color, then it's probably oxidized and won't be effective. I just wanna show you guys what it looks like. So here's an old bottle of the SkinCeuticals vitamin C serum, and this is what it looks like when it's oxidized. It's also very hard to formulate with because it's so unstable and that usually means a shorter shelf life. One thing you should keep in mind is the PAO, which stands for period after opening. You can actually find it in the open jar icon on the package. That's how long it'll be good for before you should throw it out. Lower pH formulas help stabilize it, but that can also be irritating. There are derivatives and precursors that are more stable and have a longer shelf life, but you'll have to be more patient with it because they can take longer for you to see those results. Which leads me to another point. You have to be patient with it. Skincare isn't like makeup. It takes time to see a transformation. The good news is if you do take care of your skin, you'll need less makeup. But vitamin C does take longer than some other ingredients, even if you use it every day. We're talking six to eight weeks here, but it's totally worth it. Now onto the products. We'll compare some popular vitamin C serums to help you figure out which one is the best for you. Be sure to stick around to the end because I'll talk about how to apply it and how to layer it into your routine. Let's start with the Paula's Choice C15 Super Booster. This is great if you're already a vitamin C stand and you use it regularly or if you're looking to move up to alexorbic acid from a different form of vitamin C. I really like Paula's Choice as a brand. They write a ton of content to help you look beyond the marketing and their BHA is one of my holy grails plus they're cruelty free. I like this because it has a great mix of antioxidants, 15% alexorbic acid, vitamin E, and ferulic acid. This combination is known for boosting the effects of vitamin C. It's got a pH of 3.0, which keeps the formula stable and effective, but the acidity can be sensitizing. It also has peptides, hyaluronic acid, and glycerin in it too. Peptides are great for helping fight the signs of premature aging. Basically, this is going to be great for that glow, and if you're looking for some premature aging insurance. I also like the opaque bottle because it helps protect it from the light. This has a kind of citrusy, orangey smell to it and it feels really lightweight. It's super runny. I don't know if you guys can see it running down my hand. It's almost like oily, but it's not gritty like the Timeless one. It absorbs super well, but if you do use too much, it can feel a little bit sticky, but it does dry down really nicely and just leaves that velvety finish. I was really surprised by the low rating of this on the Paula's Choice website though, only 3.7 out of five stars. I think one thing that might be contributing to that lower rating is that this has a very short PAO, only three months. So if you're new to it or you're not quite sure if you're going to be able to commit to using it consistently, then do not get this because you will be wasting it. This is best for vitamin C veterans. Next up, let's talk about the SkinCeutical CE Ferulic. This is the OG and the reigning queen of vitamin C serums. SkinCeuticals found the sweet spot with this formula, which is basically the result of 40 years of research conducted by a dermatologist and professor who became 
became their medical advisor. It maximizes the bioavailability of vitamin C while being remarkably stable. SkinCeuticals has done some stability testing to show that their serum is at least 88% as potent even after a full year. It's also less likely to cause irritation. So this is what introduced that great mix of antioxidants to boost the effect of vitamin C, 15% alexorbic acid, vitamin E, and ferulic acid. So one thing about it that is very peculiar is it does smell a bit meaty, kind of like metallic meat or like hot dog water. I personally don't mind it, but I know it turns a lot of people off. The texture of this is really similar to the Paula's Choice. It's pretty lightweight. The Paula's Choice is runnier though, which makes it harder to apply, and this one has less of that oily feeling. It absorbs really fast, and it can leave a tacky feeling before it dries down, but after it does, you just end up with a finish that looks like you are glowing. And like, in a lip from within kind of way, not in a greasy, sweaty mess kind of way. But, it's a very big but, it's very expensive. It's not expensive because of the marketing and nice packaging and brand name though. It's expensive because they hold a patent on the formula and pH due to their research and because it's effective. I've talked about finding a dupe for this serum before, but once you try this and it works for you, it's really hard to go back. After I finished my May Love and Timeless serums, I ended up forking over the money and buying this one again. Yeah, it's a problem. What can I say? This is really the gold standard of vitamin C serums. I can really tell the difference in my skin if I don't wear it, and I always get compliments on my skin when I do. But it is very expensive. So if it's within reach, definitely have this on your skincare bucket list. But if it's way out of reach, don't worry, you can find more affordable vitamin C serums that will give your skin a lot of the benefits without spending a big chunk of your hard-earned money. Moving on to the CeraVe Vitamin C Serum. So I originally bought this because I saw it being recommended a lot and I thought it would be perfect to put in my gym bag because it's so small and it doesn't have any glass packaging, but that didn't work at all. It actually ended up spilling out all over my bag. That sucks, but it also tells me something else. It tells me the packaging isn't airtight, which is a bit of a shame. I do like that it's in an opaque package though. The formula did look promising at first too. It's a mix of alexorbic acid, vitamin B5, and vitamin E, so it's gentler than the SkinCeuticals and Paula's Choice. Plus, it has glycerin in it, and it's got a nice texture. It's a lightweight, creamy gel, spreads and absorbs really well, but it stings when I apply it to my face. And that's because of the denatured alcohol in the formula. It can enhance absorption, help stabilize the formula, and make it feel lightweight, but it can also cause irritation, sting like in my case, or even burn and dry out your skin. Plus, it's even higher than ceramides on the ingredient list, so it's gonna be a no from me. Another really popular vitamin C serum I also wanted to talk about is the Dear Claire's Freshly Juiced Vitamin Drop. It's got a gentler percentage of alexorbic acid at only 5%. Plus it has some calming Centella Asiatica extracts in it as well, so it sounds really good. But I am a little bit skeptical about this one. There are a few strange things about it. First, the packaging is completely transparent, which can speed up the oxidation process. So it seems like a strange choice. Another thing that raised some flags in my head is that the pH is 3.8. A lot of the research shows that for alexorbic acid to penetrate into your skin and be effective, it should be in a formulation at a pH of lower than 3.5. It apparently also has a 12 month PAO. We know that pure vitamin C is pretty unstable and can oxidize due to light and air and a lower pH can help stabilize it, but this has a transparent bottle and a higher pH, so the longer PAO doesn't quite add up for me. Aside from that, if you have very sensitive skin, this has essential oils like orange and lavender in it, which can smell great, but it can also be irritating. Plus, citrus oils can also cause photosensitivity, making your skin more vulnerable to sun damage, which is what you're trying to prevent with vitamin C in the first place. The smell isn't overpowering or anything, Thing, it's actually kind of faint, so there's probably very little of the essential oils in here. It also has some peptides and sodium excorbyl phosphate lower down on the ingredient list. By the way, sodium excorbyl phosphate is a vitamin C precursor that we'll talk about more later on in the video. One thing I do like about this is the finish. So this makes your skin feel really smooth and soft, and the texture is kind of slippery. It's 
quite runny and a little bit oily feeling, but not in an unpleasant way. And it absorbs really quickly and the finish is just so soft and nice. It almost feels like you just used a primer and there is no stickiness. So that feeling is likely coming from the propylene glycol in the base formulation. Overall, I wouldn't recommend it because I'm a bit skeptical about the effectiveness of the alexorbic acid in here. So it's a no from me unless you're okay buying it just for that emollient feeling. Let's move on to a cruelty-free serum with a cult following, the Mad Hippie Vitamin C Serum. Why does it have such a cult following? Two things. First, it's gentle. It features a stable precursor of vitamin C called sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which was in the Dear Claire serum too. There are some studies showing that sodium ascorbyl phosphate can help kill the bacteria associated with acne, so it's a great choice if you have breakouts. This serum also has the antioxidant mix with vitamin E and ferulic acid and some glycerin and hyaluronic acid in there for hydration. Plus, it's got konjac root powder for a brightening boost. This also has some citrus and other essential oils in it though so again it's not great if you have very sensitive skin and could cause some photosensitivity but it's also pretty faint smelling so there probably isn't very much of it in here the second reason why people love it is it's a family-owned brand and they support a few conservation efforts like the national resources defense council this also has a 12-month pao so that's another plus and the packaging is in an amber colored bottle so very similar to the skin suit bottle but the texture is very different this is a lot gloopier as you guys can see it's not as runny but it does spread really well and it does absorb well but it starts off a little bit sticky at first before it dries down into a semi matte skin like finish and it leaves my skin feeling super smooth overall this could be a good option for you if you're looking for something that's planet friendly and you like supporting family-owned brands or your skin is more dehydrated and you're looking for something that has a longer shelf life. I would have absolutely loved it if they just left out the essential oils because then it would have made it great for sensitive skin. But if your skin isn't sensitive to essential oils, this could be a really nice option for you. That brings me to the last product, the Burst Stroke of Brilliance Brightening Serum. This is great for sensitive skin and to correct an uneven skin tone. Like the Mad Hippie Serum, it's also got the same form of vitamin C, sodium absorbable phosphate, so it's gentler, has a longer shelf life than alexorbic acid, and it's great for killing the bacteria associated with acne. Unlike the Mad Hippie Serum, it doesn't have any essential oils in it, so that's what makes it great for sensitive skin. It's also got licorice root extract for brightening, pretty high up the ingredient list. It's also got niacinamide at 1%, which is a great all-around ingredient with a ton of skin benefits, and hyaluronic acid at 0.1% to give you some hydration too. It's pretty cool because the bottle is easy to recycle, and it's vegan and cruelty free as well. As for the smell, there's no added fragrance and it kind of just smells a little bit like soap. As for the texture, it's very similar to the Mad Hippie Serum, but I think it's even nicer. I've had this for a while, so I think it has oxidized a little bit because it looks a little bit different from when I first opened it. It should be a lighter orange color. Back to the texture, it is a bit gloopy like the Mad Hippie one, but it's also more fluid and isn't as sticky, and it just feels really smooth. And that semi-matte velvety finish is just really nice. Overall, this is very gentle and affordable, and it's good for acne-prone or sensitive skin. But it's also great if you have some light pigmentation. Plus, it's got a PAO of 12 months. Okay, so now we've talked about the products. How should you use it? I like to store my alexorbic acid serums in the fridge because it's a cool, dry, and dark place. But you don't need to do that with the stabilized forms of vitamin C. Vitamin C fits in your serum steps in the mornings, after cleanser and or toner, before your moisturizer and sunscreen. You can also apply it at night, but I personally think it's better in the mornings to help boost the effectiveness of my sunscreen. Plus, I like to save my BHAs and retinols for nighttime. I apply it on my face, neck, top of the hands, and sometimes my chest too, especially if I find I'm not using it fast enough. Let's quickly talk about some layering do's and don'ts. Do maximize the benefits of vitamin C by looking for combos of other antioxidants, especially vitamin C and ferulic acid. A lot of the serums we talked about today has this combination in the formula already. Do add a sunscreen for the daytime since they work so well together. Do layer it with peptides if you're looking to prevent the signs of premature aging, just not with copper peptides. As for niacinamide and alexorbic acid, it might be potentially an issue because of the different pH levels, but just wait a couple minutes between them if you're unsure. It's usually 
actually not as much of an issue with other stabilized forms of vitamin C. Don't layer l acid with chemical exfoliators like AHA, BHA, or retinol as they could be too sensitizing. You might be okay with some of the stabilized forms of vitamin C, but it's always best to be safe rather than sorry. You can always use them at different times, so vitamin C during the day and your AHA, BHA, or retinol at nighttime like what I do. All right, so that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found this video helpful. And if it was, don't forget to give your girl a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more fun and informative skincare and beauty videos like this one. Love you guys. See you next time.